Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about a more or less failing business, Golang Microservices and the Rust Monoservice API that I'm building. The TLDR. I wrote a really bad microservice architecture and more or less failed at making a startup. We're going to talk a little bit about why there's an asterisk next to failed, but I'm rewriting my backend in Rust and I'm just vibing. Disclaimer, before everybody gets mad and jumps into the comments, this is not a discussion on why Golang rocks and Rust sucks or Rust rocks and Golang sucks. Frankly, they're both awesome languages that I'm not great at. That's just going to become plainly obvious by what we're going to talk about next. I also suck at basically all system architecture. I'm not great at creating microservice architectures yet. That's just, it is how it is. I'm not going to come at you with this long treatise like DHH did about why microservice architectures suck. That's not really what this is about. I'm going to talk more or less about why my microservice architecture sucks and why I'm kind of going to take a chance at creating a monoservice infrastructure with Rust. So let's start off with the before, the ugly. I didn't do a great job at doing a microservice architecture. It's a mess of 25 Golang lamb lambdas that all kind of interdepend on each other. Um, that isn't great. It created a lot of spaghetti code and a lot of types that ended up going crazy. And I just honestly didn't do a great job at it. That's because it's the first time that I've ever done something like this, but you know, I'm not going to make excuses and I'm not going to spend this whole video just kind of, you know, beating on myself. There's no point in that. It's pretty unsustainable. The types were all over the place. The logs were all over the place or non-existent. And it was essentially emblematic of somebody who was coding most of this stuff late at night on caffeine and lots of cigars. My business, let's talk a little bit about the business side of it. It, by some measures, failed. Six months, one customer, very low ARR. Um, I'm not going to include the exact dollar amounts because, I don't know, it, it just seems kind of weird. Um, there was also very little traffic and incredibly low user statistics. So basically my like daily active users was like five out of, you know, 250 something actual customers, customers, users. I also failed at getting funding. I tried to apply to Y Combinator. They didn't even give me an interview, which kind of stunk. But as you can imagine, this led me to be a little bit dejected, a little bit um, unmotivated, more or less. I knew that I kind of had to make a change somewhere. Meh, that's kind of how I felt about it. Everything just kind of culminated in not a an abject failure. I had people that used it. I had some great bug reports, some awesome feedback, some people who thought it was a really great idea, but you know, more or less it didn't go anywhere, which sucked. I wanted to make it my full-time job after I got laid off and that just didn't happen. Let's talk a little bit about the VC business side. They have to fail fast. They have to build revenue very quickly. They have to get users very, very quickly. They kind of have to move very fast. That's just kind of the nature of the VC space. The VCs, venture capitalists, are expecting you to move as quickly as humanly possible to maximize your income and the worth of your business so that they can eventually cash out and make a ton of money off of it. But I don't. And that's one of the realizations that I came to. I took a hard look at my business and my goals just after failing to get into YC and I decided to just kind of chill. I decided to do stuff that benefits me as the solo developer. I'm the only person who's written any code, me and like a bunch of people on Stack Overflow. I decided not to worry about growth too much, you know, which is something that you cannot do if you're trying to get funding. And I decided to learn and grow slowly. I'm going to keep releasing features for Grabber app because it's awesome and I really believe in what I'm building, but I'm not worried about VC funding, failing fast or at all. I really don't want to fail, honestly. And I'm not worried about hiring 30 people that I'm going to lay off next quarter because that is happening a lot. So that means I can take some time to learn Rust. Rust's type system specifically is what made it attractive to me. It's going to make it way easier to tie my back end together with itself and with the front end. It has a very strict typing system that I think kind of makes it a little bit easier to grow faster. And Golang's was good, but it's not very strict. You could kind of have your types all over the place and some of the members of your types can be like implicitly not required versus Rust where in order to make a, a member of a struct, for example, not required, you have to explicitly state it's not required, which kind of forces you as the developer to make some decisions on your data model. A monoservice approach is also going to make it way easier to find and eliminate bugs. 
when you've got 25 lambdas, all of them are all over the place and a lot of them depend on each other, the bugs can appear downstream, upstream, and all over the stream, and you don't necessarily know where the bugs are happening. Your logs are also all over the place. In the AWS console, it takes a hell of a lot to go into an individual lambda and read over the logs for, an, for a, a specific run and see what went wrong. Was it with this lambda, or was it with a downstream lambda, or was it with an upstream lambda? It's very difficult to figure out. Centralizing all of the logs in one place is probably something that you could easily do within a microservice infrastructure, but you can also do it fairly easily within a monoservice infrastructure. So I'm going to come out of it with awesome skills. At the end of the day, even if I don't settle on the monoservice infrastructure and just go right back to microservices that I've been using, I'm gonna come out of it with awesome skills in Rust and using the backend language that I'm using. Um, Poem, by the way, is the uh, library that I'm using to build this out with right now. And the end user will benefit from better software that scales and more features that are being, like, that are being built a lot faster. Once I get a hang of Rust, I'll be able to re release those features way faster because I won't have to deal with all of the weirdness that comes with Golang Lambdas that are all just hanging out all over the place. So I'm really looking forward to that. There's going to be more coming soon. I'm going to be updating a lot on this channel about Grabber App because it's kind of been my nights and weekends baby for a while. I think with Rust also, there's a lot more opportunity for me to kind of cross over between the Rust backend infrastructure that I'm building and, for example, the Rust malware that I've been building. So I think it'll be really awesome for the channel and for kind of figuring out what it is exactly I want to research. So there's more coming soon. I hope you hang around and figure out more. And if you're inter interested in malware infrastructure research, check out Grabber App. I'll leave a link to it in the description, grabberapp.io. Um, it's basically a way that you can grab malicious, or malicious files from malicious infrastructure and eventually port scan it and you know all of that kind of fun stuff. But I'm not gonna give away all of the features that I'm gonna be putting in over the next couple of months. That's about it. That's about it. Take it easy. Peace.